back from the dead. Well, hello there. Today, I am going to show you how I achieved this beautiful vampire masquerade look. First off, we are going to start by doing our face makeup. I am using two primers to start off with. One of them is to help brighten the skin and the other one is to help hide redness. Next we will follow up with foundation. After using foundation, we will use our concealer. I am going to apply the concealer with a beauty sponge. For this tutorial, we are not going to put it anywhere above our nose because of the mask that we are creating. After applying the concealer, I am using a very light shade of a finishing powder. Then from there, I am going to begin tracing the outline of the mask by starting with the eyes. I am first placing two dots on the inner corner of my eye and the outer corner of my eye close to my eyebrow, and then I'm going to connect those dots creating the outline where the eye will be on my mask. Once we have one eye completed, we will work on the other eye trying to match it. I am then taking a white jumbo eye pencil and covering up my eyebrows a little bit, trying to give them more of an illusion that my eyebrows are not as dark, and hide them behind the mask. Then I am using that jumbo eye pencil to create sort of an outline for where I anticipate the mask to be. White is one of the easier colors to use given the fact that my skin tone is a little bit lighter and if you want to fade this out because you don't like the line, it's not going to be very, very distinct that it was there in the first place. I am then going in and using a black eyeshadow base to act as the base color for this major part of my mask. Using a darker shade will help make color stand out and pop a little bit more with regards to our mask. After everything has been covered with the black eyeshadow base, instead of going over it with a black eyeshadow or a black powder of any sort to set that eyeshadow base, I am instead going in with various shades of purple and like light purple and maybe some like whites and it's, it was kind of a light purple, not really much of a white, but I'm using various shades of color to add that pop to the mask that I'm looking for. You can use any colors you want for the purpose of this video, I wanted to use various shades of purple. I cover the whole area that I used the black eyeshadow base for. And after I have gone through and applied all of the eyeshadow that I would like as kind of a base color for my mask, I am going back through and going back over the black lines that I've already done over the eyes for my mask. I am then using that black felt tip eyeliner to go through and mark up all the defined edges I want on my mask, trying to create a little bit more depth in my mask. Then I begin to draw further details of how I want my mask to be. Here I go ahead and draw the lines, I extend the lines of my mask down to the point of my nose. And then I go in in this blank space between my eyes and I start drawing any kind of design that I want. So the bright side about creating these masks is it can be left up to interpretation. If you want your mask to be very simple, you don't have to put very much design into it. And if you want it to be a little more intimate, you can put as much detail and design into your mask as you want. I actually find during this process that, of course, it's not always easy to keep your lines very straight or even from side to side. And so I found that if I used a lip primer, then I found it was really easy to remove any sort of makeup mistake that I would have done. So I continue doing designs and I decided that I want to put sort of a lattice sort of structure to my mask. I'm drawing 
certain diagonals away from my nose and I'm drawing certain ones towards my cheeks. So I have this kind of structure, lattice design going on, like a checkered board kind of, kind of look. And after I get that checkered board look, I'm going in and decorating the bridge of my nose even more with designs. And of course, this can always be up to however you want it to look. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder, so if you think it looks good, that's all that matters. I did a lot of freeform drawings. I had a reference drawing that I looked at for some guidance, but it wasn't a direct copy from what I saw. It was it was very free form. But I continued to draw the designs. You can see it on the top of the mask was done and underneath the mask. And I go through and I darken it to add a little bit more depth to the design of the mask. And to be honest, I actually found it really fun and entertaining to take this felt tip eyeliner and just draw on my face. like. I think I could probably easily just start drawing on my face random designs just for fun because I love the way that it felt. I did try using a gel eyeliner, but I found that that did not fully give the effect that I wanted, so I messed with it a little bit and come back to the felt tip eyeliner. I felt like I was in a little bit more control using the felt tip marker. I then decided to do my eye makeup. I start off by using eyeshadows that are of kind of a darker brown look that actually turned out to be lighter on my skin and because of that wasn't dark enough for me I went in with some black eyeshadow and tried to darken up all of my eye area with that black eyeshadow and then I take a kind of a black jumbo eye pencil and I start outlining my eyes and do sort of like a cat eye look on my eye but leave a little bit of that eyeshadow on there so it gives a little bit more color and dimension to my eyes. Then I decide I'm going to put on my false eyelashes. I really like that they had this pretty sparkle edge to it. I then take some roll on shimmer and add some shimmer to my eyes hoping that it would give a little bit more of a sparkle. I then decide to put on some glitter. To apply the glitter, I'm using a glitter glue, and then I'm using a loose glitter that is specifically for makeup to apply to my face. When you're applying the glitter, it's always a good idea to kind of like tilt your head forward and apply the glitter, especially when you're over your eyes. That way you don't get any in your eyes. So that would just not be fun. I used various colors of glitter. I used a, like a light pink. I used a purple. There was a red. There was also a silver. I really liked how adding the glitter to the face looked. I think it really added a lot to this look of the mask. I used a flat brush to apply the glitter to my face. I then take that felt tip eyeliner and I go through and re-outline and go over all the black lines I had before just to make them pop and make there be a difference between all the lines for where all the glitter was applied. I kind of just had to go reapply. I then had a glitter kind of eyeliner that I stuck just on the bottom lash line. Then I had these awesome little uh, self-stick rhinestones that I decided to add to my face. I thought that they would add a lot to the mask and give it more of like that glamorous, sparkly, pretty little feel that I was I was looking for. In case you couldn't notice, it was it's a lot of sparkle and a lot of a lot of shine. I'm definitely like a ooh shiny kind of person. <laughs> 
After I add a lot of those rhinestones, I went in and added a little bit more glitter eyeliner to uh, little parts of my eyebrow bone area. The final thing needed to complete the look of this mask was a feathered corner of the mask. So I began by adding feathers to my hair. It was just easy to kind of stick them in with how I did it. And then I added some eyelash glue to a couple feathers and I glued them to the side of my face. I had a pretty red flower that I added some more eyelash glue to the back of that flower and stuck that to my face to cover up the bottom of the feathers. Next, I first took a set of fake nails and I took them and made them, cut them to a point, filed them off to make them not as loose, used some denture glue and glued them to my teeth to create the fangs. To create the fake blood, I took some corn syrup, added some drops of red food coloring. You can take a single drop of blue, add that in there, and that can give a little bit more of a realistic blood effect. Of course, I'm going to have vampire bites on my neck. I start with two little dots and then red pigment, light brown pigmented eyeshadows to give kind of an effect of bruise. And then I use bright red eyeliner to give it kind of more like a puncture wound, kind of blood coming out of there. And then I just went in with the black felt tip marker, colored the holes in a little bit more. And then I took a black lip liner pencil line all of my skin, giving it kind of the effect that my veins were sticking out. I used that red eyeliner again to go in and go kind of around those same black lines I used. I used that same black lip liner pencil to give a base of black color to my lips and then I used a dark purple liquid lipstick red just on the inside of my lips. I then go in with that blood on a q-tip and I start with the corners of my mouth and I start pulling that blood down. And there you go, that is my vampire masquerade look. So the teeth are out. They didn't want to stay on very well, but. I wanted to thank you very much for watching this tutorial. I hope you greatly, greatly enjoyed it. I did my absolute best and this is my first makeup tutorial on my channel. And I hope to do more, uh, but we'll see how soon it's gonna be next time because this took a lot of planning for me to do. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and please share it with all your friends. And if you would like to follow me on all my social links, I will have them all down below. So I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and don't forget to give it a thumbs up and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!